Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, go. Hi, my name is Memo Doklik. I'm from the School of Informatics at Indiana University. I'm the second person from IU. You're going to get two more people. Uh, we find this area particularly fascinating. Uh, I must admit some things. Uh, when I began uh, creating this talk, I thought I'd be doing both visualization and integration, but I discovered that uh, the 30-minute allotment wasn't uh, enough. So, um, and obviously I don't know how to use the pointer either. So uh, I've decided to uh, look at uh, some of the work I've been doing in paleoinformatics. Uh, we have a, a very interesting type collection at Indiana University that needs to be mapped out. Um, it's 4.6 billion years of information. And uh, I thought I knew everything about rocks and time before I met these geologists. So let me assure you, uh, these areas, sexy areas that we're talking about uh, is uh, only a small part of the kinds of science that e-science that can be done. Uh, in the area. So the talk will really be about uh, integration and uh, bioinformatics. And I'm going to try to uh, stir up a little bit of controversy, I hope. It's a workshop, so we get to uh, maybe uh, exchange some dialogue about some sensitive topics. Um, this is my outline, uh, background and motivation. Uh, I'll talk about integration from my perspective. Protein families, functional genomics, these are two large projects we're working on. And uh, summary. I uh, work inside of the Center for Genomics and Bioinformatics. This is a center that IU created to foster cross-disciplinary work. Inside of that is um, the Drosophila Genome Resource Center. And there, what they do uh, are create stock and microarray uh, data for Drosophila. So we have uh, a working group. And we're home to Flybase, which is one of the most popular repositories for uh, uh, fly information. So. Um, uh, I wanted to quickly talk about, uh, I agree with uh, uh, our esteemed initial lecturer, uh, uh, Dr. Gray, whom I'm excited to speak in front of since I've used his textbooks as a database person. It makes me giddy. Um, uh, this is Jacquard. Uh, usually he's one of the people we look to as maybe having some effect on what programming is. What I've created here is uh, one of the standard uh, templates of information that you have to have if you talk about biology. This is our information flow. We like to consider ourselves computer scientists when we work in the cell. This is uh, really uh, not to be taken too literally, but the idea is that you have uh, information that's coming from uh, inside the creature uh, itself, and basically uh, it gets out through some interesting processes. And this is basically what we study. But uh, technology has changed this. So uh, I wanted to put up here. So. Basically, what our group is doing right now is uh, genome-wide research. So we're interested in basically understanding these books, which represent genomes. Uh, up in the uh, corner is my dog, 150-pound uh, Malamute. Evidently, he shares about 60% with this fly. And you would like to check out the book and check to see why he's uh, not crapping outside like he should, and maybe understand a little bit more. So uh, how has technology impacted the sciences? I've pulled up. Some other pictures of uh, prominent researchers. This is Galileo and Bacon, right? So Bacon talked about this uh, scientific method that we're all fond of and we love. And uh, I went too fast. Basically, you make some kind of observation. It doesn't have to be really dramatic. Um, but you have something you're interested in thinking about. You have a conjecture over this, this observation. And then you create some test data. And this is what we've been doing for uh, several hundred years, again, uh, uh, much, much uh, as Dr. Grace uh, spoke about. What's interesting, however, is that um, really the important aspects of the scientific method are the conjecture. And then up until recently, as, and I've tried to illustrate this with the size of the font, the data has, has been ancillary, sort of a second-class citizen, as it were. And what we're discovering in e-science that actually uh, this is changing dramatically. I have a picture of Albert Einstein on here because he's He's the uh, best known of these people who simply just conjectured, right? Walked uh, in the forest and imagined himself doing things. And now they're constructing instruments, uh, I guess, to verify uh, some of the more interesting things that he had to say. Um, the e-scientific method, which I'm a part of right now, is mostly just generating and collecting data. 
So at the uh, Genome Resource Center, we have lots of high throughput information, microarray. We also gather um, uh, protein protein information, gene gene interaction. Uh, we look at the go. And basically, what we do is muck around in this giant space. We make some conjectures, and we hope to uh, uh, hone in on what some interesting information is. What's fascinating is that this has begun to really drive the experiments, too. It has also uh, leveled the playing field, I would say, for scientists. Uh, because now uh, a small lab can work with hundreds of genes, where before you really had to have the function of the size of the data of your lab. So uh, you'll sometimes hear this called technologically driven discovery. Uh, who discovered the scientific method? We don't know. I picked some pictures off the web. Uh, Bill Gates, obviously, because this is Microsoft. It's Ventner. And then uh, Spock, because you know Star Trek starts it all. Um, so I'm just going to throw up a definition. E-science is uh, making sense of the world through the e-scientific method. So I'm generating lots and gobs and gobs of data. By the way, we're not the only ones that do this. Uh, GM uh, uh, gathers lots of data. Citibank gathers lots of data. What's, what's interesting to observe, though, is that we still don't quite know how to use it very well. And we take on faith that all this data is uh, useful. It's a pretty good, I think, a pretty good assumption, but I think it still needs to uh, 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 bear out uh, over time. Let's see. Um, here are some elements of uh, e-science that I think are important from our perspective. The structure of the data. Uh, many of us work in di disparate areas. I would uh, put forth that the kinds of data that uh, I work on, uh, Sun works on, in the bioinformatics community realm is vastly different from the astronomy community. Uh, even though we're working in large amounts of data, ours is unfortunately rather complex and noisy, uh, uh, tends to be uh, scattered uh, not only in repositories, but particular labs. Size of data, we all share this, e-science. Uh, provenance is very important. We'd like to track who made this information. In the bioinformatics community, we have machines actually analyzing data as well. So there are propagation of errors that we need to be sensitive to. Management of data, this is obviously, I, I come from database and data mining. I believe this is my mantra. Unstructured, unmanaged data is bad data. Uh, integration, I put it in quotes because I feel that most of the time people worry about integration on a very low level. In bioinformatics, we're worried about integrating on a conceptual or logical level. How do I make sense of both microarray data, let's say, and protein-protein interaction? I don't care really where it comes from. I don't care if there's a schema. I don't care if there's a query language. I want to make sense of it together to help me drive my discovery. So I just want us to be sensitive that there are other issues of integration rather than the uh, easily uh, graspable uh, 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 physical domain. Distributed nature, we all know this. Grid, we probably don't use this as much in bioinformatics as the other communities. Most of our stuff is computed uh, a priori, or the kinds of algorithms we're using really aren't, aren't uh, 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 they're, they're modest if not looking on the genome-wide level. Multidisciplinary, just like everybody else. So in bioinformatics especially, we have lots of low resolution data. Um, it is perspective dependent. So depending on whether you talk to a molecular biologist or a geneticist or an evolutionist, you will get, as someone mentioned, gene, you'll get 14 different uh, versions of gene. And this is a problem because the kinds of information they want to get at is dependent on the perspective, even though they believe they're all talking about gene. Now the biologists created this thing called the GO, geontology, which is to help the control vocabulary. We've done some analysis on it. It's very interesting. Uh, it seems to be uh, 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 useful in some modest respects. Let me claim that. Uh, pioneer free-for-all. So unlike the uh, well-defined business community, bioinformatics is just we're basically out in the woods. You, you uh, uh, have money, pay your graduate student to write some Perl. You madly look for the cheapest, least expensive software. Uh, uh, and who survives is the, basically the, uh, the person that satisfies the most people. But it's uh, very uh, Darwinian. For instance, we don't have any standards. Our, our best known file format, FASTA, is, is a social contract. And if you use, uh, for instance, O'Reilly's excellent book, Sequence Analysis, they'll tell you up front, we're going to talk to you about this format. And then the next 12 pages are various uh, uh, extensions, quote unquote, of this format. I thought it'd be interesting to do a, a, a search uh, for pictures of e-science on the web, see what popped up. By the way, some interesting work out of Iowa uh, recently, 11.5 billion pages right now, indexable pages on the web, they believe. 
So uh, these are the people that evidently have the most hits uh, from one of the search engines. Um, the grid is at the bottom from Australia. Evidently, Google is doing e-science. Uh, there's someone that is a conspiracy theorist there. And uh, I'm, I think it's a pharmaceutical company. So what the heck is integration? Uh, they're bringing together uh, disparate people, resources, ideas, so they can be associated together. So I'm very, uh, very political in this. It doesn't have to be just machines. Uh, from our perspective, we view integration as a kind of uh, midway. We would like these systems to be a synthesis. I don't want to have to talk with the biologists about the file format of the FASTA file. Uh, I, what I would like to do is, is basically bring these things together without anyone talking about anything. So I see as integration is a kind of part way from the services. I hope I'm not offending anyone about services. Um, elements of integration that we've looked at, there's local and global. So uh, in our community, uh, some sites basically keep the data there. Other sites uh, allow it to flow freely like a brook and you can change it and use it in your data, but then there's this provenance problem, uh, what it looks like. Uniform versus individual. Um, I can explain a couple of these because I think I'm running out of time. Product for the producer. So sometimes you basically uh, have to worry about whether you're going to integrate the system or you're going to try to integrate the actual data itself. The perspective is mind-boggling. We have user perspective, design perspective, service provider, implementer. So all these questions of, let's say, security, uh, uh, file format, is it going to be in a database? We have to all reconcile these when we do this integration. Uh, visible and hidden. Uh, I'm a believer in uh, not exposing everybody to everything. Let's see. So in bioinformatics, as I said, I don't believe we have a real consumer. The reason I put that in quotes because it's not clear what exactly we are. Uh, who are we that are consuming all this e-science and information that's on the web? Um, there are no standards, as I said. The technology changes so rapidly that we basically are simply treading water with the kinds of systems that we have. Uh, you just need only read uh, bioinformatics uh, for an entire year to see how many systems are proposed and new, 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 uh, new algorithms uh, uh, presented to uh, get the feel of how rapid the change is. And the myriad of perspectives, by the way, which are historically based. So there's a social issue here. So I can't simply bring together I mean, uh, uh, an evolutionist, let's say, and a geneticist, let alone a computer scientist with a biologist, right? So these are things that we have to respect. I'm going to go out on a limb here. <laughs> I'm going to say that the integrated system, uh, system should provide measurable, explicit, competitive advantage. I do not believe that people should integrate for integration's sake. And in bioinformatics, we see a lot of this. We see people claiming, I'm going to bring together these disparate database systems I have a schema that's going to merge everything. You're going to love it. And what happens is no one uses it. One of the problems is the, is the perspective of the scientist versus the computer scientist. We're trained as computer scientists to abstract. We want generality. We would like most of the things to work out. The biologist, on the other hand, wants to worry about a particular pathway that he discovered last week uh, that uh, needs to uh, have some information associated with immediately. And these general systems simply don't provide enough information. So we really haven't seen much use of these large search engines, for instance. Um, we were uh, analyzing uh, some information on apoptosis. It's a pathway uh, for program cell death. If you go to NCBI and you search for apoptosis, you'll get about 65,000 hits. It's not useful. It's just not useful. Now, if you have time, many months, you might be able to pull out some stuff. But, but getting more data, Faster is not exactly what we want. We want to tailor that information. Uh, we at, uh, anyway, our lab, we believe firmly that we should be working with the uh, biologists. Uh, there are some bioinformatics that, that work sort of in isolation. They have, there are some interesting problems in bioinformatics, certainly. There have some new problems that we haven't thought about before. But what's, what's nice about worrying, working with the biologists is that that uh, they have a, 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 a bullseye, a kind of thing that they want to solve. And it's a client. And you get to learn about the particular problems, nuances, uh, selling your system, and, and really the issues that the experimental biologist needs. This drives, this drives what, uh, what we believe is bioinformatics. 
I think uh, you need to be aware of what's on the envelope, however. That's a problem, uh, as mentioned here several times. Many, most of the systems are Linux-based, so if you go to a, a lab, in general, you'll find something working in Java. Uh, actually, the, the, <laughs> the application du jour is Excel. How I actually began in this area was went to the director of bioinformatics. He was analyzing at Dyson. It's a, a nu nuclear receptor. Uh, and uh, his application was Excel. And he would look for patterns by zooming out and zooming in. And I said, I said uh, you know, you're kind of well known. You went to Harvard. You're a full professor. Uh, is there something uh, better? And he said, no, why? So, well, I come from database land. We, ce we celebrate these sorts of problems. Uh, let me work with you and develop an application. Uh, three years later, we have an application that we're releasing right now. It took that long and many, many incarnations of the application and design to come up with what we believe is a good system. Uh, no. <laughs> But the odd thing is, it looks a lot like Excel. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell Microsoft that. Uh, for this problem, it does. Uh, I would like to also claim that uh, for all of us, when you look at a uh, uh, field that's not your own, your perception is usually amateurish. I'm going to be very bold and shallow. I had the exact same problem. And I actually was in medical school, so I apologize to Dr. Korn. I wasn't able to finish. I didn't like touching people. So after my third year uh, of uh, uh, wrestling with this, I quit and went to uh, computer science, uh, where I only had to interact with uh, the keyboard. So um, uh, however, when people learn about, uh, uh, for instance, bioinformatics, and someone says protein, and the computer science says, oh, I deal with that all the time. It's a string. I have all your problems solved. Don't believe it. And, it, and it's even the same with the paleontology. I saw people fighting, trying to figure out what the meaning of a rock was. Okay, So I know from my experience that if, if it's this bad in, in, in paleoinformatics, bioinformatics, it's probably uniform everywhere. So uh, this is um, Brasnik. It's a paper we've looked at in, in, our, in our lab. Uh, so the biologists are really understanding this. What this uh, tells you is, uh, they would like to bring together these disparate uh, perspectives to get a global understanding of what's going on, right? So at the lowest level is this, this concept of gene, genetic element, and these levels represent the various perspectives that the biologists are uh, interacting with. And only by combining them, we believe, will you be able to get uh, uh, a satisfying, uh, uh, sensible understanding of the system. And again, it's still this information, the central dogma, as we like to call it. What I'm going to show you now is a list of information, different perspectives that we have in the DGRC now just by ourselves. So this includes probably about uh, almost a dozen folk. So we worked on this for several weeks. Imagine, these are all areas of research, data that we're generating, that we want to bring together, integrate, quote unquote. I haven't talked about database. I haven't talked about the network, security. I just want to integrate the data. This is how complicated an uh, area it is. So what I learned, and what I'm, 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 I'm preaching right now, is that design take a different tack. Because as a naive database person, I believed I could just go in, find the schema, not talk to anyone, come, and the solution is there. Doesn't work like that in bioinformatics land. What I came up with is uh, this loose model, what I call an information artifact. And please forgive me, I'm going to use this horrible word. But I believe there's a cognitive model, if I can borrow that from uh, another area, that people have, scientists have, when they interact with the data. And you have to respect this cognitive model, this visual cognitive model. And only that way will you get them to use your stuff. Now, as a database person, what you can do is bury the database, never talk about the ER model, and, and everybody's happy. And this is what I've discovered. So what I did here was put these three different perspectives that the biologist liked. But underneath it is a database. Uh, I'm pulling this up to show you, again, this sort of funny thing that, uh, from our perspective, they're dealing with strings, but they're really not. They're trying to figure out what are called grand challenges, which I would be nice if eScience had some. A grand challenge would be to figure out the structure of this protein. So, the soft, so what they end up doing, actually, is, is, is rather uh, commonsensical. They align these proteins and try to look for uh, patterns. 
Crystallography is one summer I spent when I was trying to do, actually it was an MD PhD. I have to, it was worse than just quitting med school. I quit two programs. Um, I had to look at crystallography and you try to figure out the structure. There are computational techniques. The NIH just uh, actually though, very interestingly, just correctly uh, predicted a large protein. Uh, it was done at Rice. Uh, there's a very famous fellow there right now called Ariel Hernandez. Um, so maybe there is hope for these grand challenges. Uh, what my software does, CatPaw, Curation Alignment Tool for Protein Analysis. Uh, this is common, everyone's seen this alignment. But what we did was something unique. We actually allowed the biologist to annotate and curate at the residue level. So what that means is at each point you can put any kind of information you would like. You say, what, what, you say yeah, so what? It, no one does it. <laughs> they use Excel. Um, What's nice about this system is that I can immediately show it to a biologist and she knows how to use it. Are there stuff out there that's related? Certainly, probably the state of the art is, is uh, an application funded by Pfizer called PFAT. It's a tiny Java, Java app, uh, application that looks like a kind of a broken Excel. Uh, allows you to put some text into a cell. Uh, so I think that's our, as our closest uh, probably competitor, if one would call it that. I think we're doing OK. Um, ex uh, some requirements as a database person. I wanted to allow the biologists to do what they do best, biology, interact with the information artifact, that is the cognitive model they had, not worry about SQL, and then create this GUI. Um, I have the picture of Sisyphus, because as I said, it took me about six incarnations of the software, uh, several years, two years, to get this thing working. Uh, so in deference to Dr. Gray, there is a uh, schema underlying this. It's uh, uh, probably more of a conceptual uh, phenomenon, but uh, there is possibilities for relational databases in the area of bioinformatics. Here's uh, another snapshot of our application. Uh, we have three kinds of data types, text, URLs, and images. Uh, this is because this is fundamentally what the biologists use. We found them abusing the images, however. They didn't want to type, and they started photocopying the papers and putting them in the images. And so, it's gotten, so I'm going to have to put in something that doesn't allow us to do that. But as you can see, it's, it's nice for them. Because now, if you work in a family across the world, you know what, what has been done to which protein by what group. And you don't have to have it uh, uh, lying around in your office or on your hard drive. These are curations, by the way. We allow multiple single curations and we also allow deletions. We also allow annotations of motifs. I don't have those up there. There's not enough time. Probably one of the most interesting things from the database perspective is that we relearned what query means. So if you grew up in database land, you, you learn query as a logical operation, right? You have a model, you try to fill it in, you return these tuples. Uh, the biologist simply would like to see all the data no matter what. A query to a biologist means annotating it with some kind of thing, a color, let's say, a marker. And they want to see which things have it, which things don't. So fundamentally, it's changed from what I learned. Also, their queries aren't monotonic. They're numerical. They have some funny kinds of thresholds. We had to get used to that. So it's, it's exciting that as j I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm not old, but I was a bit jaded. I thought, who could tell me what a query is? And indeed, the biologist made me rethink about this fundamentally. Right here, what I'm showing you is the way for the biologist to interact with a pattern. Uh, I'm uh, probably excluding Dr. Korn and maybe a couple of you who know about bioinformatics. Probably you can see some patterns up there, right? You don't have to be uh, a biologist to know that there look like some lines. That looks kind of interesting. So what you can do is interact with this 10,000 foot view and immediately be drawn to the actual data and discover hopefully what it is. Uh, in its current incarnation, it works locally through Java. Uh, I'm a little unhappy with that. What we would like to do uh, using .NET is to allow the individual user to edit uh, one kind of uh, uh, alignment. This is very complicated. Biologists completely don't understand this. And please, yeah, that part of the tape needs to be erased. Um, but uh, the distributed nature of the application would really make it difficult. And we're hoping that .NET will allow us to do this. We think that this application is very nice as well because finally there is a document type or kind that the biologists now can share. What happens is when you read an article, you annotate it, or you get your graduate student to annotate it in Excel. 
what we would like to do is simply share this file. So you could send this file. And we've created a website, by the way, for people who don't have the application to look at the HTML version, which has clickable links to the annotations and creations that they have. Um, the second project, which I have to talk very quickly about, is in, uh, Indigene. Again, uh, this harkens back to that first snapshot I showed you of these perspectives. This is a very hot topic in biology right now. They've suddenly discovered that if they combine their knowledge, they'll be able to discover things that they couldn't do singly. Still not convinced that's true, but uh, this is the way things are going. So what we decided to do whoops, uh, is combine uh, uh, large-scale, uh, high-throughput techniques, these two hybrid microarray, large-scale genetic screens. We also have several others that we, we're working on. And you can imagine a node in this graph is basically a genetic element. An edge is some kind of combination of this information. And if you get a computed gene, you might discover what that gene is. Or if you cluster it, you might discover something interesting about the clusters. Oops. This is a snapshot from our application. Uh, below is some interesting information about the Drosophila. I'm going to speed up because I have about four minutes left. I wanted to talk, let me give just a minute and a half about the visualization problem that I have. This is Cytoscape, which is probably one of the most often used v visualizers of, soft, of, the, of these large genetic uh, or any kind of graph. Probably all of you are, are admiring it, right? It looks like a flower. Well, here's the problem I have. This is completely an artifact of the software. So that means that the, the graduate student that was paid to program it decided to use some kind of easy algorithm to, to draw the circles. If I show this to a senior biologist, it'll take me 40 minutes to explain. First, a presence or absence of an edge means one thing. The location means another thing. And the length of the edge is divorced of what, what the strength is. Now imagine you have to interact with the data and try to figure things out, right? Because we all naturally think, well, there's got to be there's a flower thing happening here. What I would like us to do is be sensitive to these visualizations and worry a bit more about semantically what they mean when they're rendered on the screen and the biologist works with it. Uh, I'm going backwards again. Uh, this is some information about the kinds of uh, data we're using. Probably you'd be drawn to R. Beitman. He's very famous with microarray. Even that data, we had to fill in stuff. Again, this part of the tape should be erased. Uh, uh, some of the data is, not, is missing, let's say. So you have to clean the data, but it's accessible online. What we've done is created a database of this data, which is a database of other data, right? And then we're going to allow people to search it. By, by, by the way, this is all Drosophila. Um, this is uh, uh, just a short citation list of the kinds of work that's being done in the biological community on integration. My guess is 95% of you don't know any of these folk. What I would suggest to you is it's just as important on this level of integration as it is to the physical and computer integration. Only will, when both of these work will the project be successful. Again, with uh, I, Dr. Gray, so I threw up another schema. So this is one of our schemas for, I think, the microarray. We would like to leverage uh, SQL Server. I won't say what it's on right now, but it's on a, a free database system that dramatically and at will drops its indices. Uh, we contacted the manufacturer. They said, so what? And uh, finally, then the biologist said, OK, we'll listen to Crazy Memo. We'll put it on a SQL Server and see what happens. We'd like to put some uh, other systems in place to allow a bit more seamless uh, connection between these applications. So in summary, uh, integration remains a significant challenge. I put forth to you that it's much, much more than simply trying to worry about schema matching or uh, uh, protocols. It is a wide range of things that need to be brought together. And just because the biologist has access to this data doesn't mean that uh, the problem's solved. Uh, we have to educate our fellow scientists. So I've been educated dramatically. I forgot a lot from medical school. But I've educated the uh, biologists on computer science. It's very exciting. They get to learn about complexity and why you uh, can't uh, do traveling salesmen, let's say, a red button to do everything. Uh, experimental biologists, uh, what we did was teach them that actually there is a use for a database. Believe it or not, uh, we had a, a, data, uh, a biologist tell us there's no need for databases in bioinformatics. A flat file's fine. So it's almost, I almost passed out. 
Uh, and then I, I regained my composure and I tried to dialogue with him and about two and a half years later, I think uh, he believes it. We have uh, lots of things we can offer them that they don't know about and they shouldn't, but it's important. From the database land, I would say um, the area is different from business, much, much different. The clients are different. The environment is different. The problems change. And I don't think the, the, the successful typical ways that we've been taught to do software engineering map very well. I would say uh, also the new perspective on queries is very exciting to me. I'm trying to get that out, obviously, as a paper. Visualization is very important. I've discovered that it's just as important as a sound data model. We were actually, I believe, the first group to do a usability study, believe it or not, on software for uh, this bioinformatics. I've combed the literature for serious HCI evaluation, and I couldn't find any. Uh, racial model has something important to say, and uh, lots of people to thank. Dr. Peter Cherbis, Justin Andrews, whom I work with directly, Dr. Sun Kim, he'll be speaking tomorrow, riveting. I would please come. He's the Associate Director of Bioinformatics and a swell guy. PhD student, uh, Jim Costello, Dan Fay, obviously. And these are all the folks that work with us uh, that have contributed directly in the last like two weeks uh, on the uh, Indigene and a uh, Capital Project, and that's pumpkin butter up there. So. Thanks. So I hope I pissed off someone. <laughs> sure. The, so the question was, how can we leverage, what, what can we do to leverage our expertise as computer scientists? You must work with the biologist. You can't do it in isolation. You can't read a book and say, I'm going to do schema matching. Probably the most irritating problem I hear about is schema matching. What I tell the people is, if you want to do schema matching, go to KEG. Go to KEG and just try to do schema matching. You'll discover it's not doable. You have to do everything in an instance level. So I would say, not find someone desperate, because desperate people to me are a little bit crazy. Find someone, <laughs> find someone who has a good problem and who's nice, which that's kind of small. Uh, good problem and work with them. Connect yourself with the scientist night and day. Talk their, talk their lingo. Yes, sir. Sure. The only way I think we'll be able to define this area rather than it being sort of a fad, you know, we have to define who we are, what are, what are the problems we're working on. Other, anyone that I pissed off? Yeah. I'd like to elaborate sure. on the earlier question. Sure. Uh, if you remember, uh, you were discussing the, the diagram that looks like a flower. Yes. How do you know uh, about bridging that gap and, and making that more useful to somebody, a biologist? I mean, that's, that's kind of an abstract. No, it's, it's important. To do that. So again, I, I hate to repeat myself, but you need to go into a lab and you need, you need to work with a biologist who's going to say, I'm going to spend now $100,000 on equipment and personnel to, to study this periphery of, of, of nodes. And then you have to be committed to say, oh, by the way, this is just, I click another button and you'll get another design. So you have to let them, you have to educate them on what the meaning of this stuff is. We take, we take it for granted what we have, right? You and I both know that when we see a game on the video that we know no one's really shooting each other, right? But for a, for a biologist that sees this kind of stuff, they really, they give it meaning. Even the edges, presence and absence of edges don't have, uh, don't, don't make sense. Because they will not sometimes depict an edge even though they've experimented, or they may not have data that supports so, so it's, a, it's a bit complicated. Thank, thank you for the question. Anybody else? I'm eating into the time of the next speaker, so thank you so much. <laughs>